This is Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization. We traveled to Devil's Corral Canyon looking for Bigfoot. We're visiting this area because it is a Bigfoot sighting area. We received a Bigfoot sighting report. It's along the Snake River and the Snake River has a long history of Bigfoot sightings. This little box canyon with the spring in it is an area of a Bigfoot sighting. It was really hard for us to find. I'm sure people that live around this area is like, oh, Devil's Corral Canyon. I know where that's at. Well, it was a little bit difficult for us to find. There isn't any signs pointing the way or anything. It's kind of off the beaten path. So we're here to give you the Bigfoot sighting report. Hope wrote to us at RMSO, and this is her Bigfoot sighting. Kick back, relax, check out the area where the Bigfoot sighting happened, and we'll go over her report. Bigfoot. He travels through the winding canyons of the Great Snake River. In July of 1970, I saw him and was followed by him on a night of the full moon. He struck a mighty pose, standing on the canyon ledge about thirty yards above me. I could see his hair rippled by the breeze in the light of that full moon. It was a long run out of that box canyon called Devil's Corral that night. Now I live in Blackfoot, and I have a sneaking suspicion a small group of them might be getting studied by a certain Bigfoot authority out on sacred ground. Hi Hope. Interesting. I do agree the creature follows the Snake River canyons. If you don't mind asking, I love details of Bigfoot encounters and sightings. How long was your encounter and sighting? Could you see the color of its hair? Were you able to see its face or eyes? And were you able to get a rough estimate of its height? Sorry for all the questions. I love to hear other people's experiences with Bigfoot. Did the creature make any vocalizations that night? We were teenagers taking a hike down in a box canyon outside of Twin Falls. It was late evening when we started our hike. I was always watching for animal tracks and I noticed an impression about 16 inches long and 4 or 5 inches wide. Only one in a watercress covered spring runoff. I stuck my hand down in it and felt for depth. It was about 5 or 6 inches deep and I thought it was an odd track but it was filled with water so it appeared rectangular only. We hiked as it got dark and heard a bipedal sound and snorty breathing following aside us and stopped when we did but saw nothing. We decided to exit back to the spring as we walked. I told the others to watch for skunks because I could smell one. Then we stopped for a breather at the base of the canyon wall. As I looked up the wall to the ledge protruding halfway up it, I saw what I thought was a human silhouette sitting on a rock. Then it stood up taller than any man I had ever seen. I would estimate seven to eight feet tall. The moon was slightly behind it, as its face was in shadow, but I could see long hair waving from shoulders to legs, looking very muscular, no neck. Just watching us so close, I was afraid to point. I said to the others, What's that? My boyfriend looked up and said, Run. And we did, all the way back up the canyon road to the top. I think there was probably two of them. One was running by us, and one sitting on the ledge. After forty years, I put it together, and we never went there again, and never told anyone but his mom. They are like any other animal. They follow food, habit, and shelter. And I don't think they are hard to find if you seriously want to find one. Their numbers are rising. It's obvious. Thank you for elaborating for us, Hope. I pass through Twin Falls often to visit Bigfoot sighting locations, and it makes perfect sense to me that these creatures use the Snake River Canyons as their own highway, to, so to speak. Plus, I am sure many live along the river, too. I would like to give Jenny a thank for narrating Hope's story. The Snake River flows from Yellowstone National Park all the way 
through Idaho. It, it like curves down to the south part of Idaho and then comes right up along the Oregon-Idaho border. And uh, near Washington, it crosses the border into the Washington, Oregon area through Hell's Canyon. It's amazing how often we find ourselves researching or searching for Bigfoot at Bigfoot sighting locations on or near the Snake River. One of the places that's kind of close to where we're at is Jarbage, Nevada. The Jarbage River flows out of Jarbage down into the Snake, and there's a history of Bigfoot sightings there. As a matter of fact, the Native Americans called them cannibal giants. Tisaha bits is the Shoshone word for cannibal giants, and so we find ourselves uh, going down into uh, the northern part of Nevada looking for this cannibal giant. The Snake River is just an amazing place. I mean, if you really think about it, if Bigfoot wanted to follow the Columbia River from the Pacific Northwest, it could follow it up to the Snake River, into Idaho, into the Rocky Mountains, or back. Maybe Bigfoot comes from the Rocky Mountains and travels out there. Obviously, there's Bigfoot sightings in almost every state in the United States except for Hawaii. I do believe that the Bigfoot sightings are more prevalent in the Pacific Northwest, but we have them everywhere, and this river is no exception. The Mighty Snake River is just a beautiful place to check out, and we love following up on Bigfoot sighting reports in the area.